Well, hey there, this is Joe Van Cleve. Today, I want to talk about a new subject that I don't think I've covered before in my video series, and that is the abacus. And um, I was hoping to make this just one video on the abacus, and then that would be it. But I think I have a lot to talk about, so I think this is going to be a new series. So we're going to talk about the abacus. Sometime in the early 1970s in Albuquerque, uh, there was a, uh, an Asian import shop called Yamamoto's, and they had these Japanese Soroban abacuses for sale, and I remember buying one along with Kojima's first book, and I soon became fairly adept at simple um, addition and subtraction on the abacus, and I've always maintained uh, an interest in the subject over the years, and my skills have probably waned, I think. Um, this is a, a, a tool for mathematical calculation that does require some degree of practice and skill to be adept at it. An abacus is a bead frame calculator. It has a number of uh, columns of rods with beads strung on them. And there are various numbers of beads based upon the type of abacus it is. And they're used for, for calculations, mainly addition and subtraction, but a person can also use them for multiplication, division, and square roots. And I think you can also do logarithms and things like that. There's kind of a modern day resurgence of interest in abacuses in certain cultures, and people who are mathematically bent have kind of discovered all kinds of new things to do with the abacus. But as far as a historical item, abacuses date back thousands of years into at least the Greek culture uh, and the Romans and probably the uh, Indian culture, uh, certainly the Chinese and of course the Japanese. Uh, today, many of the Asian Pacific Rim countries still employ the abacus, at least in education, primary education of children, teaching them mathematical skills. Well, here are three sample abacuses from my collection. Let's start here with the top one. Um, this is an abacus of Chinese uh, origin. In fact, this one is made for the export market uh, in China itself. Um, the Chinese abacuses are commonly known to have five beads on the bottom part of each row and two beads on the top part of each row. Each bead on the bottom row counts as a value of one for that particular place value, while each bead on the top counts for a five. So you can represent on each row a, a number from zero to 15. You can uh, place numbers on the abacus uh, from anywhere you want on the on the, the rows, although there are certain rules about how to place numbers when you're doing, for instance, multiplication and division. Um, but this is a very common type of abacus that is seen in import-export shops uh, in the, the West. The Japanese discovered the Chinese abacus or borrowed it into their culture. And in somewhere around the 15th or 16th century, they changed the Chinese abacus by getting rid of the second bead on the top row. So now there is only five beads on the bottom and one on the top for a value, a maximum value of zero to 10 on each row. And they also changed the styling of it. They have these biconic beads that are, they have a sharp little edge and it makes it much more efficient to operate uh, because you can grab each bead much easier. The thing about the Japanese abacuses that are so interesting, at least the ones like this, is the joinery. This is a definitely an early 20th century model. And by the way, this copper wire that you see is, was just uh, something I added because I, was, I had a display of these things hanging on my wall at, at one time. But this is not actually part of the abacus itself. But this is a classic example of an early uh, 20th century abacus. Um, in the 1930s, uh, the Japanese further refined the abacus by removing the fifth bead on the bottom. So now each row has a value of 0 to 9, which represents the modern way that we think of decimal notation. Each place value has a value of 0 to 9. So this represents the modern configuration of the abacus in Japan. You'll notice along the dividing bar, there are little pips or dots every three rows, three columns, I guess you'd say, and uh, those 
are used to represent the uh, decimal point for locating numbers. Now abacuses in Japan are, are still used in classroom instruction. And I have a sample of four different kinds that are used by children. And you can tell um, by the size of the beads whether they're used for children or adults. This one right here, and it comes in its own cardboard box. It has a 1-5 configuration, so it's an older abacus. There's not as many rows. And it's a nice, interesting red-colored wooden bead. Um, and they're built rather exactly. Uh, nice construction methods. They use these, uh, two of the bamboo rods have little metal bushings where they penetrate the side frame. And then they have tiny little metal uh, brads that hold those in place to kind of stabilize the frame. And also the Japanese abacuses, the side pieces have a slight arch to them along the left and right sides of the abacus. So that's kind of an interesting style. Uh, here's another uh, school kid type of abacus with an interesting little box. Uh, this one has the little logo of the manufacturer on the side. My camera's not focusing. Uh, but again, this is just a little bit bigger. This is a more modern 1-4 abacus with bamboo rods and wooden beads. It has the the dividing bar with the little dots every three columns. And again, the construction methods are very similar with the little metal bushings on two of the rods and little metal pins securing them in place. And the same kind of uh, shape to the side piece. And you may not be able to tell it because this one's painted, but there's some joinery involving uh, the, the corners that put these together. And so they're, they're quite a nice little item, the way they're designed. Okay, here is a more modern abacus. This one has a molded plastic frame and plastic beads, but it still uses bamboo rods. And it has the, the dividing bar with the decimal points, and it's more of a modern style. Um, and it is made in Japan, yes, made in Japan. So anyway, that's a modern one. Finally, this one uh, is more slightly bigger. Here's the box. And it's a slightly larger size abacus beads. Um, it's a really nice wooden frame. And you can see that more of the rods have the little metal bushings uh, to reinforce it into the wood with the little metal pins. And it still has the slight arch to the, to the side of it. And some nice joinery on the corners. And this one has reinforcing in the back that's traditional. There's the little pieces on the left and right and a central bracket that reinforces it. And it also has two bamboo rods on the back to kind of reinforce it as well. So very sturdily made and very nice size abacus. And um, being how, as how the beads are slightly larger, uh, it's probably for, slight, for older people with bigger fingers, I would say. This abacus I showed you earlier is very much like the one that I bought as a kid at, back at Yamamoto's store. Um, and it's almost the same size beads as this one, uh, but m many more rows. And there's usually 15, 17, or 19 uh, rows of beads. And the reason why you have so many rows is not because you're adding and subtracting 19 digit numbers, but because when you're doing multiplication and division, you, you enter one number here, another number there, and you do the product or the quotient answer in the middle. So you have to, so you're really doing three different numbers, and that's why you have to have so many, so many rows. There are also abacuses that are built more for decor, decoration. I have two brass ones here. This one is the Chinese configuration, the 5-2 configuration with rounded beads. And it is uh, a brass frame. And then this smaller one is the more modern 1-4 Japanese style with the biconic beads. And it's interesting about this one is there's little set screws or machine screws in the corners that keep this thing together. So this is kind of an interesting, you could call it a pocket calculator. Uh, it is, these, both of these are very quite heavy actually, but I would almost say you could use it as a paperweight 
as much as you could a desktop calculating device. So I've talked about abacuses with different size beads. I want to mention that these ones with smaller beads are really intended for school age kids for classroom instruction. But in my collecting of abacuses over the years, the first abacus that I collected that was truly for adult size fingers was this one here. And I found this in an antique store of all places in Silver City, New Mexico. And what interests me about this abacus is there are kanji characters that label each of the rods. And if you took careful notice of it, and you probably can't see it easily on camera, but there's two sets of labels. These rows here are labeled, and these rows here are labeled, and the central row is not. And the labels on both sets are identical. And what I believe these were used for were used by merchants and in, in shops and for small businesses. And one side would be used for debits and one side would be used for credits. That's why you have the labeling of the different denominations of yen duplicated on both sides. You also see the similar kinds of kanji labeling of the rows in this abacus, which again has full-size adult finger beads. And I really like this kind. Um, a little more compact, but the larger size beads. Um, and you can tell, uh, you may be able to tell, that some of these beads have seen a little bit of wear, and along with the frame itself is a little bit worn. Um, there's no uh, indication of a brand name or anything on this, but it still has the wonderful joinery, the hand wrought joinery that is common to these Japanese soroban. Here's another abacus that I acquired more recently and it has its own box and this is also an adult size frame and it has some kanji characters on the back here which I, don't, I haven't translated but it's again the full size beads and it again has duplicate sets of markings for the denomination of yen one set here one set here which again leads me to believe that it is debit and credit kinds of business use. But these beads, instead of being fine uh, tropical or Asian hardwood, are molded plastic, I believe. So it's a little more modern, and the rods appear to be steel. I've also acquired some unusual abacuses. This one uses steel rods and a more modern construction materials. I, um, but the, the beads are wood, but they're painted or dyed. And what's interesting about it is it's using the older 5-2 Chinese configuration, but with modern biconic Japanese style beads. So it's kind of a blending of different uh, styles of abacuses. And it is trademark made in Japan by Daruma. The Japanese and the Chinese aren't the only culture that has made uh, bead frame calculators. This is the Russian abacus. And um, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce what it, the name is called. The thing about the Russian abacus is the frame is held, actually it should go this way, the frame is held this way with the rods going horizontal and you slide the beads from one side to the other and the rods are slightly arched to, so that the beads, once they've been moved over, they won't easily slide back. And also they kind of employ a hybrid of the Japanese style where they have a, a ridge so you can easily get to the beads and there's a little enough of a space in between where you can get your adult size fingers in there. You might notice that there are 10 beads to a row, so 0 through 10 on each place value, but one of them only has 4 beads. And the reason why is because it uses denominations of rubles and kopecks. Uh, for the, the old Russian currency. So this is a Russian or Asian abacus. There is a strong modern culture of abacus in Taiwan. And this represents a modern Taiwanese abacus. Here is the box. And opening it up, it is a modern Japanese soroban style abacus. But the frame is molded of plastic and it uses bamboo rods and plastic molded beads that look very much like the old Japanese style beads. So this is a really a very cool abacus. Modern construction methods, but traditional design. 
Um, and the other thing about the Taiwanese abacus culture is instruction in schools is very uh, popular with teaching kids the abacus, the soroban. And here's an example of a workbook uh, for the abacus. And this is a rather um, advanced workbook because this is a workbook, workbook for multiplication and division. Okay, so this is more advanced abacus use. Booklet 131A. So there's a whole instructional curriculum, stacks of these books of different uh, levels of skill for the instruction of children. Now, not only is it possible to buy Asian abacuses of various styles and designs, but you can make your own abacus out of simple craft materials. Here's an example of two abacuses that were made at a workshop several years ago that I attended here in New Mexico. And they're made from pieces of cardboard cut to size. They're using craft type popsicle sticks. They're using wooden dowels glued together and using these plastic pony beads, these plastic craft beads. And you can employ all kinds of different colors or whatever. But the thing about these is they're very easy to make and you can use them to teach kids basic abacus uh, arithmetic, how to add and subtract with the abacus. And it's a fun project to do with kids because you can have a workshop where they learn to make these. They, you, you put kits together that they can build these themselves. And then you can teach them how to actually use the abacus. I don't want to get too much into the details of the operation of the abacus because I think uh, it's a little more complex than what I want to do for a general purpose video. But just to show you the basic operation of the abacus, numbers are represented according to place values. So for instance, we can choose to use this column here as our ones column. And as you, you clear the abacus, as I said earlier, by moving the beads away from the bar. And the traditional way of doing this is you tilt the abacus down and then you run your finger along the top, which I have a hard time doing upside down, to clear all the beads. Then to enter numbers, you move the corresponding number of beads up toward the bar. So for instance, that represents the number two, that's the number three, that's the number four, that's the number one. When you get to numbers larger than four, you have to use combinations of fives and ones. So there's five, there's six, there's seven, there's eight, there's nine, and then 10, right? One on the tens column, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So the abacus has a long history in human culture that goes back thousands of years. And interestingly enough, it's still being taught in primary schools in primarily Asia. There is also a growing online community of abacus interest. People who uh, love collecting them, using them, and building their skills and doing various mathematical problems with them. I really enjoy the abacus for, especially the Japanese style. I really enjoy these, uh, collecting them and using them. And next time in, in part two of this new series, I'm gonna talk a little bit about, more about my homemade abacuses and the, and the journey I made uh, of building various kinds. So until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve. Have a great day.